Good morning or good afternoon, class. My name is Patricia Briones, and for my ethical analysis in healthcare PowerPoint presentation, I have chosen physician assisted death. Physician assisted death, or assisted suicide, or death with dignity refers to when a terminally ill patient requests a physician to provide him or her with the means of death with a lethal medication. There are those who support and oppose this. Those who support agree that a person has the right to choose death to escape from unbearable suffering, that there is respect for patient's autonomy. There are currently nine states that allow physician-assisted death. Furthermore, the physician's duty to alleviate suffering may at times justify the act of providing assistance with dying. Those who oppose believe that it is unethical because it goes against the duty of a physician to preserve life. Physicians have sworn an oath. Some believe physicians coerce or pressure patients to choose this over a more complex, expensive treatment or palliative options. There has not been a single documented case of coercion to date. Also, it goes against authority-based or faith-based views. For example, the Roman Catholic Church considers the deliberate termination of a life as morally wrong and goes against the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. Some also believe that God is ultimately the one who chooses the time of death. My personal belief, I do support physician-assisted death. Patients' autonomy is respected. Patients have the right to control their circumstances. Doing good by ultimate relief of suffering and allowing the patient to be in control of their decision-making at the end of life shows compassion by the medical profession, which is an act of benefits. Also, refusal to relieve suffering and deny the patients their request is harmful to the doctor-patient relationship. Also, research shows that seriously ill patients suffer tremendously due to their illness. No patient moves from a state of zero to no suffering to intractable, unbearable suffering overnight. Currently, I work in the intensive care unit. I've dealt with many terminally ill patients, participated in palliative extubations, and I've administered morphine drips for end-of-life care. Honestly, this is a more comfortable, dignified death and a much more better memory for the surviving family than the violence of a code when a cardiopulmonary arrest occurs. Often, we have patients who lack decision-making capacity and their decisions are fulfilled through the surrogate who sometimes just want to keep the patient alive regardless of how their prognosis is. So ultimately, when this conflict arises uh, between the advanced directive and the wishes of the, par the patient's surrogate, the attending physician seeks assistance from the ethics committee. Analyzing projections for evolution in the future. There have been tremendous advances in the healthcare over the past five decades, which honestly have benefited society in numerous ways, one being the ability to sustain and prolong life where once individuals would have simply died. Ill persons today can live much longer. We'll go back to about 1975, where Henry P. Van Dusen and his wife Elizabeth committed suicide. They chose this rather than suffering from their disabling conditions. Around 1997, the first U.S. law was passed in Oregon allowing the legalization of physician-assisted suicide. In 2019, New Jersey becomes the eighth and Maine becomes the ninth jurisdiction to enact assisted dying law. So in the future, we expect more states to enact assisted dying laws. If states were to eliminate the laws, these terminally ill patients would just find another way to commit suicide. Impact on healthcare providers. 
How do healthcare providers respond when presented such a request from these patients? This is a very tough on the healthcare providers and it affects them emotionally and psychologically. In some instances, physicians who have expressed support for the law, but have discovered that when the time actually came, they couldn't follow through, leaving their patients stranded. And some physicians feel that death coincides with failure. But physicians do acknowledge that they are actively helping to make a patient's last wishes, last days, free from pain, free from anxiety, and spiritually rewarding. Professional development and in-service for current healthcare providers. One of the most important aspects of responding to a request for assisted dying is to be respectful, caring, and to include a patient's spiritual or religious beliefs. People nearing the end of life may have spiritual needs such as finding one's meaning in life or even ending disagreement with others if it's possible. The dying person might find peace by resolving unsettled issues with friends or family social workers or a counselor may be able to help. Careful reflection ahead of time can prepare one to openly discuss your position with the patient. Providers need to acknowledge and respect difference of opinion when it occurs. Organizations exist which can provide counseling and guidance for terminally ill patients, and no physician should ever feel forced to participate in a physician-assisted death if he or she is morally opposed. Continued education and in-service programs are necessary and right now a requirement to keep medical licenses active. Those states who have legalized physician-assisted death should have this as a requirement. Training for future personnel. Providers should have knowledge and be educated about local law. Every state has different laws and regulations. Physician to patient family communication should be emphasized. This is a very sensitive subject. Healthcare providers should be taught how to navigate the conversations and be able to guide the patient for the end of their life care. Providers should also have culture sensitivity. And again, like I stated, certified training or continuing education is specifically for the states ha that have Physician assisted death should be required. For example, there is a Stanford Physician Assisted Death and Education and Training Module application that is available online for free, but not a requirement. Lastly, psychologists and psychiatrists should be involved. Regardless if the patient has a mental issue or not, ruling this out is important and ultimately will conclude that the reason for death is only due to debilitating terminal disease. Hospital Ethics Committee are a group of people who serve in an advisory capacity for ethics issues in a hospital or a major clinic. Membership varies depending on the committee's function, so they are available in order to seek for guidance. You can seek consultation through an ethics committee or other appropriate resource in keeping with ethics guidance. They may help fill this gap and provide institutional resources and mediation of value conflicts. Unfortunately, there are many ethics who actually are against the physician-assisted death. They state, permitting physicians to engage in assisted suicide will ultimately cause more harm than good, but hopefully they should be able to help facilitate the implementation of physician-assisted dying programs and there'll be more in the future. Ethical theories and principles such as non-maleficence, justice, autonomy, and benefits are at the forefront of this medical debate. Providers struggle with finding an optimal balance between the autonomy of a terminally ill patient and the physician's commitment to non-maleficence to do no harm. The autonomy, every patient, every person has the right to choose uh, whether they want to die or not. And there's justice. Justice requires that we treat like cases alike. A competent terminally ill patient has the right to treatment refusal and choose death. Treatment refusal could lead to more suffering. 
Justice requires that we allow assisted death for these patients. Current policies. Currently, you have to be an adult, terminally ill, given a prognosis of six months or less to live, be mentally capable of making your own health care decisions, be a resident of either nine listed states, and physicians must also inform the patient of alternatives, which include palliative care, hospice, and pain management op options. Next of kin must also be notified of the prescription request, and a second consulting physician must confirm the diagnosis, prognosis, and mental competence. My suggestions to changes in addressing the new challenges is with today's advances in healthcare medicine, other options should be done first, specific therapy, medications, or even palliative care. Physical or emotional symptoms should be managed effectively prior to choosing physician-assisted death. Symptoms associated with the dying process such as pain, depression, or nausea. Again, there should be an involvement of more healthcare professionals. Currently, there's two physicians involved with physician-assisted death, and there should be an involvement of the psychiatrist, psychologist, to make sure to distinguish depression from a natural reaction to a terminal illness. Currently, physician-assisted death does not specify an implementation process. One issue with current regulations is the time when the prescription is written and the medication is given to the patient. But the law does not preclude providers from establishing their press practices. And I believe the regulation should not vary state to state. They should all follow the same regulations. Insurance and health care reform. The Affordable Care Act is changing how we access health care and broadening the wide span of options across the health spectrum. Currently, they prohibit discrimination against individuals or institutional health care entities that do not provide assistance suicide services. Currently, Medicare and Medicaid do not cover these costs. And covering the cost of physician-assisted death rather than the treatment costs can save insurance companies money, but most continue not to approve or authorize this. Uh, currently, under the circumstances, sometimes choosing to die isn't really an option at all if the patient is unable to pay for it and if the insurance denies it. I believe insurances should consider the same policies and regulations set by the state's law. That concludes my presentation for Physician-Assisted Death, and these are my references. Thank you.